Hi everyone, this is a, just a short uh, lecture talking just a little bit about Nicholas Poussin and a very well-known painting of his um, done uh, sometime in the 1640s, uh, now today in the Art Institute at Chicago, Art Institute of Chicago in Chicago. And this uh, painting gives a particularly good, um, I don't know, insight into Nicholas Poussin's uh, working methods and a hint as to his influence on later artists. In essence, uh, Nicholas Poussin, for many uh, students of his work, is the founder of a style that will come to be called in a century or two uh, neoclassicism. In essence, what Poussin's great achievement was, uh, was to take the conventions of classical landscape painting uh, that had been you could say inaugurated in the work of Venetian painters, especially uh, Titian, um, and then uh, developed with further uh, specificity by uh, the Bolognese artist Anibale Caracci to take those precedents and really uh, focus on the sense of structure and the sense of organization with a very explicit kind of call to uh, moral thought and action. And one of the great things about Poussin, one of the great advantages uh, that we have in discussing his work, is that he wrote uh, at considerable length to, uh, among other people, his patrons on uh, precisely this subject. Poussin uh, emphasizes uh, basically throughout uh, these writings the need to, in essence, read his paintings and in fact provides uh, the reader with a kind of description of his working methods, including most interestingly, um, a mode of uh, working that seemed to uh, be uh, basically like setting up a diorama, a little viewing box, a sort of theater uh, within which he would uh, arrange little model figures to work on the composition uh, correctly. It Again, the sense of neoclassicism, the revival of classical ideas and principles. Um, this uh, kind of morphs over time into a style of painting uh, that later in the 17th century will basically be described as the grand manner. So how is uh, St. John on Patmos a good example of Poussin's art? In essence, he's taking a religious subject. Um, St. John, the author of the Apocalypse, the Book of Revelations, and situating him within a landscape that is very consciously drawn from the outskirts of Rome, what's often described as the Campania, C-A-M-P-A-G-N-A. -A -A. Um, and this is a, a kind of area that many artists in the years following Poussin um, will draw upon for scenic motifs and a sense of the vanished grandeur and glory that was, uh, that was ancient Rome. So there would be, uh, for instance, you know, fragments, architectural fragments, um, and always in the vicinity, um, allusions to uh, the actual city, the fabric of Rome, not just Rome as a city, it's worth pointing out, but also as a kind of historical, and as in this case, uh, theological concept as well. You can see that St. John is reclining in a kind of statuesque mode right here, and he's got a... Um, uh, to his, uh, just directly to the right there, the symbol of uh, St. John the Eagle. Uh, then to the left is a very beautifully depicted uh, sort of plinth, or it's really kind of hard to tell. I don't know if anybody's written on it, a kind of pedestal, a remainder of some presumably grand uh, Roman building. Um, other fragments are distributed around, uh, including various drums, sort of parts of columns. In the background, more explicit references to ancient Rome are seen in the form of specific buildings, and art historians have tied these particularly with buildings we might find in the um, uh, in the Roman Forum. Very far in the background, sort of middle and far, far background, we see grand sort of hills and valleys uh, with more uh, populous uh, areas, uh, particularly in the uh, far left. Um, Again, the sense of careful geometrical composition dominates near and far. And this uh, extends, of course, to the landforms that are in the sort of near distance right behind uh, the figure of John. 
the intermingling of urban and rural, natural and artificial. Those are hallmarks of, of, of Poussin's work and dovetail nicely with the theme, which of Saint, uh, the, the character of St. John. The theme is that, of course, of the end of the world. And in this particular case, Poussin is drawing connections between literally the visual remains of Roman architecture, um, that, that sort of crumbling or disintegration and the rise of the Christian, uh, uh, the new Christian world. So, so John is literally situated right in the, the sort of fore, foreground of that. However, it's pretty clear that Poussin, while not particularly lamenting the demise of the Roman Empire per se, the famous city of man, as Augustine formulated it, um, is also, I think, hearkening back to the Roman uh, era as one that illustrates remarkable, uh, especially moral uh, um, and intellectual rigor. And so I think that's a great uh, sort of way to think about Poussin's work is that use of the visual arts to convey a serious uh, moral you know, didactic uh, purpose. So the sense uh, as we look through virtually every corner of this scene of control, of composition, of careful choices being made by the artist to convey his point with maximum clarity and exactitude, those are great ways of, of summing up uh, Poussin's work.